Uh, thank you for coming out. <coughs> I decided to do this um, just to share with the residents uh, some things that are going on in the village, things that have happened in the past year. Um, and I thought it would be a pretty good format to be able to speak um, openly about things that have taken place. Um, I'm going to make one comment that probably won't go over well. I'm somewhat disappointed that we only have about 20 people here. Um, unfortunately, we rely on Facebook and social media for our information, and oftentimes the information is um, wrong by the time it gets to you. With that being said, <clears throat> I'm just going to touch on a few things that took place last year. Um, and I would say that, that I'm fortunate that I have a, a village council that has been really supportive. Uh, while we don't always agree, uh, we disagree in a manner that is respectful and professional. <clears throat> Last year, uh, the village undertook a couple major projects. One was our stormwater um, repair project at a cost of close to a million dollars. Uh, that project has been completed. It was a necessary project to meet our DEQ requirements. Uh, they changed the uh, requirements and uh, we had to upgrade our system to meet those requirements. Uh, while we were doing the uh, stormwater project, we also undertook the reconstruction, repaving of five streets within the village, uh, something that hadn't been done for a while. Um, last year, we also completed our SAW grant. We had received a SAW grant from the state of Michigan in the amount of uh, $313,000. And that SAW grant allowed us to bring in a company who inspected all of our storm and sanitary sewers. And they televised our uh, storm and sanitary sewers. They have put all these, um, this televising on um, this so that we can always refer to areas that we think may uh, be necessary to um, repair in the near future. Um, there was some repair work done in areas that were imminent of failure, um, so we undertook some repairs. Last year we also um, we hired a new village engineer. Um, I think he's, he's over there in the corner. Uh, Tri-County Engineering is our, is our new engineer uh, for the village of uh, New Haven. And uh, so far, we're, I think we're all pretty satisfied as to the work that Tri-County is doing for the village. Last year, we also upgraded our computer system here in the village. Um, we upgraded our server. Um, unfortunately, in the past, our system did not have backup. So whatever was being um, stored, if we had lost it, it would have been lost forever. So our system is now um, pretty much um, up to date. It has all the latest bells and whistles that any uh, municipal service should have. <clears throat> Last year, we, we entered into an agreement with a prospective developer to sell 47 acres on Clark Street. Um, they're still doing their uh, due diligence, so the sale has not been finalized. Um, hopefully they will um, finalize the sale and the 47 acres on the north side of Clark Street will be developed into a subdivision. Uh, in addition, Lombardo Building came back to the village they were hoping to um, 
possibly sell somewhere in the neighborhood of 12 to 14 homes last year. Uh, when in fact they broke around, well, they sold 35 homes. Um, they have, I think they're somewhat overwhelmed with what's going on here within the community. They have constantly, uh, we're, we're constantly working with Lombardo to see how we can streamline our process here in the village because the paperwork that is necessary to build a new house is um, huge and we only have one person that works in that department and she is uh, at times somewhat overwhelmed um, with all the paperwork. But with that being said, the fact that they're building, uh, we're happy. I mean, it's kind of a good problem to have. Last year, we also bought a new fire truck. Uh, the first new major purchase for the fire department in about 25 years. Um, the truck is it's in service, it's being utilized. It uh, took the place of uh, two vehicles that we owned. And the fire department, I've been told, and I can see in their faces, are quite happy with this purchase. Um, and it's being paid for out of their budget. The uh, three bills that we um, annually adopt for the fire millage, that's what's paying for this truck. Moving to 2018, which I think 2018 is gonna be even more exciting than 17. From a general fund standpoint, um, I proposed to council at the January meeting a budget that um, hits on a few items. But the biggest item for the residents will be that I am proposing that we reduce our tax rate by one mil. Um, And this is one bill that, that uh, we can afford to give back to the residents. We are also proposing that we continue to freeze our garbage rates. Uh, while our garbage rates um, are supposed to go up annually, uh, there is no need to raise them because we have a surplus in that fund. We are also going to absorb New Haven's share of the 15 mile sinkhole. Uh, that cost to the village is not going to be passed on to the residents. We're able to absorb it. We've also contracted with uh, DTE. Um, every street light in the village of New Haven will be, will be replaced with, with LED lighting. Now, when I say that, uh, some residents will see that the street lights in their community, in their areas, will not be replaced because we don't pay that bill. So if you live in Pinewood, Perry Acres, um, Amherst, Decorah, we don't pay those bills. So just the street lights that the buildings are responsible for are being replaced with LED lighting. And the cost to the village is approximately $49,000, and according to DTE, we should um, get that back in about two and a half years. Uh, what else? Some of the other things that we're doing is that um, here in the office, um, we brought on board a new accountant. Uh, which was actually in the fall of 17, the fall of 16. And with her help, we have uh, realized some lower health care costs for our employees and lower liability costs. <clears throat> we are still touching on a few things that um, 
you know, we've been able to take our uh, CDBG funding and that we can't use on sidewalks anymore. And we're, we are involved in a minor home repair program throughout the county. So we want the word to get out to our residents that there's a minor home repair program that they can take part in if they qualify. So we want to get that word out there. Uh, this year we're also going to undertake the repaving, the reconstruction of Clark Street from Haven Ridge to the railroad tracks. That project has pretty much been approved by council. Um, it has not gone out to bid yet, so we will be undertaking those bids, I think, around April. With that, we're also going to put in place a road, a, a, a street repair program that uh, will based on our paper study. <clears throat> the uh, paper study, it rates every street within the community. And it's given a number. And based on that study, we will annually take on the repair of roads as uh, funds become available. And you know, this is probably the best way to uh, attack the problem streets, and I say that because it takes the politics out of it. If a road has a bad rating, no matter where it's at, then that's the street that will be repaired. Um, the Pazer study, the most recent one we had done is about three years old, so we're gonna upgrade, update the uh, study, and then we will attack those roads as you know we're 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 our road fund is is quite healthy okay but i truly believe that at no given time should we spend probably more than 25 percent of that road fund just in case something major did come up where we needed some um, money to make a major repair of something so that's going to be the the um, the approach that we take. At the same time, we're going to start enforcing um, sidewalk replacement. There's a lot of sidewalks within the community that are in dire repair, um, and I will be bringing the council at the March meeting a couple proposals as to how we can attack that. Um, <clears throat> according to the ordinance, it's the homeowner's responsibility. And it will always be the homeowner's responsibility. Um, it's unfortunate that we can no longer use CDBG funding for sidewalk repairs, but there's a couple ways that we can do this. We can either attack the whole village as one, or we can uh, possibly divide the village up into, say, quarters and do a quarter of a year. Um, and we need to give, we're going to propose, I'm going to propose to the council that we give the residents the opportunity once they're identified to make these repairs. If not, then we'll contract out all the work and just build a residence. Something else that we just recently uh, did, we, uh, from the fire department standpoint, we just approved a contract to replace all the radios um, with the work that's been done by our chief and the assistant chief. Uh, the fact that we got in early uh, saves us, I think it's about 50% of the cost. So we have contracts to replace all the radios uh, for the park for the fire department. And at the same time, the budget that was proposed has a hourly rate increase for our firemen. Um, we need to continue to compensate them for the work that they do. Moving on to uh, the DPW, 
I think I've already touched on most of the DPW work that is being done from the stormwater project, the saw grant project, the Clark Street rebuild, um, and the road repair project and the sidewalk replacement. Our Parks and Rec Department is becoming slowly but surely a little more active. And we're still trying to get them wrapped up to where they can really offer a lot of things to our residents. Um, but as we've done in the past, we will continue this year to sponsor uh, the Easter Egg Hunt. They will uh, sponsor music in the park. Um, they purchased a couple benches that were put on the uh, pathway that leads to the high school. Uh, we will we'll continue to sponsor smart trips to ball games, um, amusement parks, uh, whatever they decide that they want to sponsor. They're also planning, they're, they just started talking about a 150th um, celebration. In 2019 will be the 150th year for the Goods of New Haven. And so plans are being made right now to formulate a committee that will plan and put on a 150th celebration next year. Um, <clears throat> right now the Senior Center, which is the Old Village Hall, and if you've never been in there, uh, we probably should have given a walking tour before we deal with it. It's uh, going on, it's currently being rehabbed into our new senior center. Um, it's been gutted, it's been rewired, it's been re drywalled new ceilings, new doors. Um, right now we're just waiting for floor covering. So when that's completed, we'll have a grand reopening and we hope to expand on our senior program and get more seniors to come out and partake in these programs. Our planning department, they're currently undergoing a review of all ordinances within the village. We have found and realized that a lot of our ordinances are outdated. They just don't pertain to 2018. So they're pretty much going through, they're gonna be going through our whole planning, our, our whole ordinance and, and striking what, what isn't needed and adding what is needed. Um, code enforcement has been a big issue within the community. There's been years of non-enforcement and which has caused a lot of our residents and businesses to take an attitude that I can do what I want to do. Um, right now we have in place a code enforcement officer and uh, the codes, uh, a lot of the codes within the village have been updated and so he's out trying to get people to conform to the new codes, which has been a slow process. And believe me when I say slow, because we want to do it right, and so that when we, if we have to take someone to court, we've got all our ducks in a row. Oh, there's something I'm missing, and I'm not sure what it is. Uh, we've also, if you haven't noticed, uh, we got a new uh, new Dollar General that opened just before the holidays. Uh, there's a dentist that has opened up in the uh, Hux Plaza at 27 and Gratiot. Uh, we have new management at the North Gratiot Market. Um, I think I pretty much hit on everything that I had planned on. It only took me 20 minutes. <laughs> 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 
At this time, if there's any questions, I'd be more than happy to try to answer them. Um, I found the information on the study uh, for roads. I'm sorry. Great news, the uh, the roads fund. And I was wondering, is there a possibility that um, the Haven Heights subdivision could get curbs put back on the streets? Because you know, once the roads were fixed a few years back, we never got curbs. How how would we go about? Getting the curves. Okay. That would be part of the paver study. Yeah, okay. Um, because right now, people in the wintertime, they can drive right up on our front yards on, on Stevens, and, uh, and that's not really cool. Um, so, is there something that we, that we should do? Uh, should we just consider the information presented to you, or should we come to the office? Or? Uh, when when uh, Tri-County is doing their pager study, I'm sure they will recognize that those curves are missing. Missing. And, and they will give them a rating. Okay. As to the Shaw Drive is beautiful. The Stevens Street is all smashed. And, um, and that's why the mailboxes get knocked down every one. Oh. <laughs> no curve to stop them. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm like, if it was something else I wanted to bring up, but, uh, Good job. Uh, while we're talking on roads, let me just touch on one other thing. Um, because of the construction that's taking place in the Cora Park and Pembroke, uh, those those roads will not be priority. They're taking a beating from the construction, and until a high percentage of that is developed, then those roads will be uh, repaired. Because I know Pembroke, I ride Pembroke pretty much every day, and they're taking a beat. They are taking a beat. And I know there's an area, and i um, taking my granddaughters to school the other day. There's an area in the car that caught my attention. The last stop sign before you get to the school, coming off of Salt River Drive. Fair Grove. What's it called? Fair Grove. Okay, yeah, there's, there's a big section in that. Intersection. Uh, unless it's a major failure, then of course we will address a major failure. But as far as the overall condition of the roads and those two developments, they will pretty much have to wait until those developments are completed. I'm curious about one other thing. I was flipping through Facebook and I don't do it often. Sure. And I saw you. And I saw you doing a, it like, it was maybe a promo? In no, it was a uh, off the guard at a big basketball game. I was asked to come into a cafeteria, the cafeteria, just to give my opinion of the village of New Haven. Good job. I think we uh, should do was, it. I was still hyped up from the game, so. <laughs> yeah, we need to do that. It's a nice commercial for the village. Yeah, I was actually trying to get to the parking lot. <laughs> I have a question on the sidewalk. Um, the sidewalks that were marked bad the sections in front of our house are the ones that were put in by the village when they did the uh, the water lines you know the other ones are are just fine so our responsibility they're what 10 years old now huh eight nine years old was it that long ago i think it was about 2010 <laughs> They're, they're your responsibility. <laughs> Trust me, I have one in front of my house. <laughs> <laughs> that orange paint, that orange can of paint didn't give me a break either. <laughs> the important thing about sidewalks is the fact that uh, there's an ordinance on the books that we must enforce. Because if we don't enforce it, then we assume some liability for those bad sidewalks. And so, so we must enforce that ordinance. That's all. Sorry. Um, yeah, Chris, um, there are still a number of uh, areas that really don't have any sidewalks, period. Uh, how are you dealing with that? We, we've had this discussion, and you know, we haven't come up 
the, you know, there's only a couple of streets that don't have any sidewalks. The one thing that we're trying to address is to connect the communities so that when a child is walking to school, they never have to walk in the road. Okay, and that's why when we do the Clark Street um, repaving from the tracks to Haven Ridge, the sidewalk that's on the south side of Clark Street will be extended all the way to the tracks. So that when a kid is walking to school, they never have to walk in the road. But the other thing, we have had some discussion about because I think Victoria doesn't have sidewalks most of the way, and and I'm not sure where else. But I know back in this uh, this area back here, there's no sidewalks either. Yeah. <clears throat> Questions? Come on, guys. I think all. <laughs> In my opinion, the village is um, we've come a long ways. We're 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 solid enough to to take on projects. Um, you know, we're not rolling in dough, but we're we're sound. Um, most. You know, rule of thumb, you know, requires that you have approximately 25% of your um, <clears throat> operating fund set aside. Uh, like as a rainy day fund, and I think we have more than 25%. <clears throat> Much more than 25%. You know, I mean, we, we've come a long ways. We've completed a couple of audits. Um, and which have been slow because the the firm that we brought in, Yo and Yo, <clears throat> they had to go back, um, for instance, to complete the 1415 audit, they had to go back and reconcile some issues that took place in 2010, 2011. And that's the only way that we could get an audit that was clean. And right now, the last two orders that we've gotten have been clean. And there, so there's some issues that, that took place back then that we had to you know, make sure that they were right and they were, you know. So our last two orders have been clean and they're currently undertaking the next audit. Can you uh, elaborate on what that mill means to residents? Let's say if somebody owns a hundred thousand dollar house. Very little. Okay. It's a. I think it's it's eight dollars. No, it's. Oh, Sandra gave me the number. It's Sandra, she was supposed to come back today. It's eighty nine. Something eighty nine. It's okay, you don't have the number. I, I, just yeah, I don't want to be mis yeah, I don't want to misspeak, but it's it's still something to get back. It's, it's, it's so. something to get back. Um, we're looking at you know our water and sewer rates and right now we're not gonna touch them. But I say that um, knowing that probably in mid year, because our new rates go into effect in July, in mid year we will have to take another look at them to make sure that we're still generating enough money in the water department. Um, you know, it's unfortunate that that we here in the village have done a lot of things right. We um, have maintained our tower. We, we fill our tower during all peak hours which is a cheaper rate than filling in at peak times. The residents of New Haven actually, in the last year, have used less, less water than they did previously, okay? But with the Great Lakes Water Authority, um, 
what a lot of people don't understand is that they have a fixed budget. And if their fixed budget is, say, I just thought a number, uh, $50 million, and they only generate $40 million from water, they get that other $10 million from fixed <coughs> charges. So the number that we got for that are to go into effect in July, our actual water rate goes down. <coughs> but our fixed rate goes up. That's how they make up the difference. <laughs> you know, we do everything right to conserve water, and we fill in all peak hours, and we utilize our tower, and what we get for that is we get a higher fixed rate. Because that's how they meet their budget. Well, that hardly seems fair. Yeah. It, it's not fair. <laughs> you know, they should operate on a uh, usage basis plus 10%. But they don't. They operate on usage plus their fixed rate charges. And then they they tell us that we must help cover the cost of the city of Highland Park, who is $22 million behind. <clears throat> and we must cover some of the costs for the Flint fiasco. Victoria, and you know where that old building is? I think a church owns it or something. Yes. There was somebody over there measuring roof and stuff. Are they just doing general maintenance on it, or do they have plans? I have no idea. Mm -hmm. I know someone continued to cut the grass over there. Oh yeah, they they all keep it and everything. Yeah. But I've never seen any action. But I saw they were up on the roof and they were measuring and everything. And I was just wondering if it was just no, to I keep no it idea. up or. Any others? I wasn't going to say nothing, but um, <laughs> 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 the, the mobile home park, our, our, the village collecting from or are the village still in litigation? We're still in litigation. Okay. Yes, the, the parks have started paying their, they started paying their water debt. They have started collecting the sewer debt from the residents. So they collect it, but we don't receive it. We're still in litigation. Uh, we were in court last Wednesday, and we were in court this past Monday. Yeah, we're supposed to be going to, um, we're supposed to be going to arbitration binding arbitration, but they haven't agreed to that yet. Questions? George? Um, you know, I thought long about asking this because this is, I don't want to put it on the spot, too, but, you know, one of the, uh, the oldest and the most, uh, I guess, uh, troubling uh, issues that we've had to deal with over the past uh, 10, maybe going on 15 now, was this building. Is there any light anywhere in the end of the tunnel of how are we going to uh, get out from under the issue with this building? You know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Anybody that's been here knows exactly what I'm talking about. We've had some discussions. Uh, we've had some discussions. Um, we haven't formulated a plan of attack, but we've had some discussions. And right now, you know, quite honestly, I would not want to undertake another legal issue mm -hmm. until we resolve the one that's pending.
Any other questions? One thing that I, I think I forgot to touch on, but I see my good buddy Jeff in the back back there. Uh, last year we were informed that we have um, smart funds, I think they're called community credits or something to that. Help me out, Jeff. So. Yep, yep, community credits. Okay. Yeah. That were not being utilized by the village. Well, we use smart money for our bus trips. The the community credits were just accumulating and they're just sitting over here on the sideline doing nothing. And, and I was approached by Jeff and uh, Fred from SMART. And uh, so council voted to transfer these credits to uh, Lennox Town, to the <coughs> Richmond Lennox, or just to the township? Yes, to Richmond. Richmond Lennox. And, uh, these credits are used to help support the small buses that you see running around town. And based on the report that I get from uh, Mr. White, um, the residents of New Haven use these small buses. I mean, they, they utilize them. And so it was only the right thing to do that we give these credits to Richmond Lennox so that they can help support what those small buses do for the residents of this community. Questions? I can't go home before eight. <laughs> you usually say I'm the opposite during the council meetings. <laughs> Even though she's out of town. <laughs> if not, thank you for coming out. And we hope to see See you at the March meeting, March 13th.